Why, hello and good morning. The Moopsie also says good morning. It's a Tuesday. We've got a pretty wet pattern setting up later this week across, well, a good chunk of the state, actually. Some beneficial rains on the way, probably some severe storms as well, but it's April. We have to deal with that. Let's talk about it in this Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning, it's Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Boldy and Chief David Reimer. Happy to report that outside of a few hailers yesterday, we did manage to get through the day without any sort of big severe weather issues across the state of Texas, which was nice. That cap did end up holding strong, and we had some cloud cover, keep temperatures a little lower, and again, most of the upper level lift managed to stay north of not only Texas, but Oklahoma as well. It was actually pretty ill-timed it turns out it arrived in the central plains at about 1 a.m. this morning, sparking off a line of severe storms in Kansas and Nebraska, dropping tornadoes around Grand Island and Kearney, Nebraska this morning. But for us, nope. Zilch, nada. We got a few storms. We had some showers with the occasional rumble of thunder yesterday in the state, maybe some small hail in central Texas. Not to write home about for mid-April, that is for sure. Well, what about today into Thursday? Let's see, today into Wednesday. I'm a day ahead of myself. Don't blame me. I want the weekend. Well, clouds are going to hold tough today across the southern two-thirds of Texas with generally southerly winds should be less rambunctious than yesterday and last night. Uh, you can see a couple of storms possible as we go into tomorrow along the Edwards Plateau, the Rio Grande Plains, the potential for a few storms to fire up in the northern higher terrain of Mexico and try to make their way towards the international border. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Those of you who have followed Texas weather for a while know we have a good old phrase called Del Rio Wing. And that is simply because that's how common those storms are. During the spring and even parts of the summer months, they fire up in northern Mexico, slowly move towards the border. Sometimes they make it across the border, and sometimes they do it in a rather spectacular fashion involving softball-sized hail and 110-mile-an-hour straight-line winds that manage to take out a radar dome. That was a long time ago, but... Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. As you can see, that this model weakens those storms pretty quickly when they get near the border tomorrow. Otherwise, this morning, end of the day, maybe a few light showers. The Arklatex, Northeast Texas, the official severe weather threat has been removed by the Storm Prediction Center. And you can see why this model don't fire a thing in the stormy department. And that looks likely. It should, all the forcing lift needed to break through the caps is going to stay too far north. Uh, you can see... Uh, we'll have some westerly winds today across, really, the western half of the state as the dry line slash Pacific Front moves east. Sorry, southeastern half of Texas. It's going to stay humid. Let's talk about wildfire danger over the next few days. We're going to have some issues today, tomorrow, and again on Thursday. Very high to extreme fire danger forecasted from the Texas A&M Forest Service, especially now that we're seeing temperatures well up into the 80s and 90s. Any surface fuels that haven't managed to start greening up or have and have just died off again are drier than a popcorn fart, brittle, ready to burn, a lot of energy released when they combust. An ignition component or ignition probabilities are pretty high up there again. Panhandle, West Texas, the big country, Northwest Texas, the Concho Valley, the Permian Basin, the Trans-Pecos, the Edwards Plateau, the Big Bend, Guadalupe Mounds, Davis Mounds, the borderland of far west Texas around El Paso. So today you can see that risk is a bit further east because the dry line's further east. Tomorrow and Thursday, dry line pushes back farther west. Probably that risk also pushes back farther west. Don't you love the dry line? Even when we don't have storm issues, we have issues. It's just fire weather related. Or yesterday, wind and blowing dust related too. Because, well, yeah, blowing dust. We. All right. Chance for storms outside of tomorrow night in parts of the Edwards Plateau, the border down in the Rio Grande Plains. Thursday, this is going to be an association with the dry line slash kind of a Pacific front, really, and all it's going to be is a dry line. Uh, the potential for isolated, maybe scattered, rowdy thunderstorms returning Thursday afternoon to Thursday evening. Some model data, and we'll show it in a minute, suggesting the possibility of some afternoon pop-ups as temperatures warm well into the 90s. That dog's about to fly in here. That'll let the cap 
become weak, and as temperatures warm, we could see some pop-ups occur, and that would allow for some of these storms to develop and then continue into the early evening hours. What are you doing, dog? Y'all can't hear it, but it sounds like a circus is going on out there. She got a bath the other day. She's still rather sassy. Uh, thunderstorms would generally be capable of producing large hail, localized damaging winds. The tornado threat, yeah, very, very low. Hail, wind, heavy rain, lightning, you know the deal. Uh, let's take a look at the global forecast system. Again, that's Thursday afternoon to Thursday evening. And you can see that here, pop up. Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, die off late Thursday evening, leaving us with a mostly dry Friday morning, clouds galore, and then we see the subtropical jet become more active. Friday evening, another round of storms, maybe in the Permian Basin, far west Texas, we'll refine that. And then as we get into Saturday, it's going to rain, ladies and gentlemen, lots of moisture, plenty of lift. And a cool front bringing scattered to perhaps numerous showers and thunderstorms for a good portion of Texas Saturday and to at least portions of Sunday. We'll be able to refine that element of the forecast as we get closer, but it looks like at least the first half of the weekend is going to be wet. The potential for a few inches of rain. We may be dealing with more of a heavy rain flooding situation for Port ports how about parts of the state versus a higher severe weather threat we will probably shift towards hydrometeorological issues heavy rain versus convective or severe weather issues which is nice because again i want my little vacation this weekend and weather videos over the weekend i can do that's okie dokie severe weather coverage i kind of put a damper on it and uh, Mother Nature already did that two weeks ago, and I had to reschedule this whole trip across the country. So I'd like to be able to actually do that in relative peace and not have to worry about Mother Nature trying to throw softballs in Texas. But eh, we'll see. It's mid-April. Whenever you try to do anything with Mother Nature, Mother Nature will find a way to completely and utterly ruin it. So let's talk about temperatures over the next few days. Wow, Mother Nature took my voice away, too. That's not very nice. Today, high temperatures across the state. Well, 70s in the Arklatex, 70s in parts of the Panhandle, and in the higher terrain of the Guadalupe Davis Mounds. Everyone else, you're either in the 80s or you're in the 90s. Or if it's like Rio Grande City yesterday, you're at 111 degrees. That's absurd. But anyway, yes, welcome to April. Welcome to spring. And for some of you, it's summer. Tomorrow... Yeah, it's going to get worse. Temperatures bump up several degrees. We're looking at probably upper 80s to 90s. Northwest Texas, North Texas, the big country, the Permian Basin, the Concho Valley, the Big Bend, the Edwards Plateau, the Rio Grande Plains, South Central Texas, the Hill Country, South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. And yeah, someone's probably going to be at or above 100 degrees because yay. Now, as we get into Thursday, temperatures in the Panhandle highs back in the 60s, 70s, rest of the state uh, we're looking at more locations very near 100 degrees, San Angelo, the Hill Country, the Edwards Plateau, the Permian Basin, the Rio Grande Plains. All of y'all are going to be within flirting distance or spin distance, if you prefer, of the triple digits. And Del Rio, you're going to be in the triple digits. DFW, 90s. Abilene, 94. San Angelo, 98. San Antonio, 92. Austin, 91. Houston, 85, but hey, check it out. Right along the immediate Texas Gulf Coast, that sea breeze coming on in, providing some relief highs in the low 80s, upper 70s. Go to the beach. But guess what? As we get into Friday, the changes begin. With high temperatures, 60s, northern third of the state, 70s, northern half of the state, kind of. Southern half of the state, well, y'all are still hot and humid. Highs in the 80s to 90s. With, again, the possibility of scattered thunderstorms beginning as the cool front moves south Friday afternoon, Friday night into Saturday. And then on Saturday, whoo, look at this. Highs in the 50s in the panhandle. Maybe 40s. 60s along the north of Interstate 20. Uh, 70s to low 80s along the north of Interstate 10. The Edwards Plateau, Deep South Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, the Rio Grande Valley, the Coastal Bend. Sorry, y'all kind of miss out on this. It is really difficult to get a cold front that far south in late April. Highs in the upper 80s to 90s, but we'll keep an eye on it. Maybe y'all will get lucky, but again, at least there's going to be the chance of rain, so that should help. 
All right. Well, that's it for your Tuesday edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. The website and mobile app, which had some boo-boos over the weekend because I thought it was a good idea to try to optimize a few things. I broke a file and corrupted it and had to wait three days for the server company to restore the files. Ah, that was fun. That didn't used to be an issue, but alas, all things change, and especially in technology. So, good news, that's fixed, which means those of you in our mobile app, you'll get this video in your inbox this morning. Same on our website, all that fun stuff. Those of you watching on YouTube, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's okie dokie. Thank you for subscribing to Texas Weather Center on the YouTubes or the U-Hoots. I've clearly had caffeine because it is caffeine. And caffeine is caffeine and coffee, coffee, coffee. Okay, we're digressing. What was I supposed to say here? Oh, yeah, you can get your local weather forecast, interactive weather radar, storm chasing videos. You would have gotten it yesterday. You could have watched the storm chase stormies in the big country. Live severe weather coverage when necessary, which it wasn't yesterday, thankfully. And, of course, the daily Texas weather roundups. Just search for Texas Storm Chasers where you download apps for your mobile device. And as always, you can find us on the web, TexasStormChasers.com. All right. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. How did this video get over 11 minutes? Oh, yeah. Caffeine. We'll talk with you all again tomorrow morning. Have a good one. God bless. See you later. Mm -hmm.